welcome to Haunting Television. I'm Jeanette, and I am here in my tiny corner office of my tiny apartment to bring you my next review, which is a graphic novel, and it is Pretty Deadly. Ooh. Um, Pretty Deadly is a horror western comic, although it kind of defies labeling for many reasons. Uh, I guess the best way to describe it is it's, it's like a folk tale told really brutally in a western setting. Published by Image Comics back in 2013, the initial issue, and the issue I'm reviewing is the collected works of Volume 1. Volume 1. Yeah, I have a hard time saying things sometimes. Um, <laughs> so, Pretty Deadly, originally, I, I actually wanted to review this in February for Women in Horror Month because three out of the four main creators are women. And it's an awesome horror comic. But I could not get my hands on an actual physical copy until now. So now you get a review. Also, I still haven't gotten my hands on my own copy. You'll notice these lovely little tags. Yeah, the library helped me out on this one. So now I, I can touch pretty deadly and I wouldn't actually recommend chewing on it. I don't know why I wanted to chew on it. That's a terrible idea. It's a library book. You don't know who else has been chewing on it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so Pretty Deadly was written by Kelly Sue DeConnick and written by Emma Rios. And the two of them actually met originally while working on Captain Marvel. Um, they did a couple issues together then and then they apparently discovered they work really well together and decided to make this. Um, Kelly Sue DeConnick you would know from... Captain Marvel and Avengers Assemble you would have seen her work in, and Emma Rios you've seen her work, if you're a comic nerd, we love you comic nerds, um, in Doctor Strange and Osborne. She's done the art in Osborne, which looks really cool. I want to see that one. Um, so together they created Pretty Deadly. So Pretty Deadly is narrated by a bunny and a butterfly, and it starts off the tale kind of in the middle, and you're introduced to Sissy, who is this girl wearing a vulture cloak, and she has mismatched eyes, and she's wandering around with her blind gunslinger guardian named Fox. And the two of them go from town to town, telling the, uh, performing, rather, they perform the tale of the Mason and the Beauty. And the first thing you hear in issue one is this story. So the Mason married this beautiful woman, and then to protect her from the rest of the world, he trapped her in a tower and left her there. And she, of course, got very depressed and very desperate, and then called on Death to release her from her prison. Well, Death himself showed up as a personification of Death, and uh, he was quite smitten with her. She was just too darn pretty. So they had a baby. The baby was death Face Ginny. <laughs> so death Face Ginny is the vengeance. She's the, the spirit of vengeance. And then her task is to go around the planet and wreak revenge on the sinful men who've done wrong by women around the world, like the Mason did to her mom. So after the telling of that story, Sissy and Fox go off into the desert and uh, that's when we find out that they are being hunted by several someones. And uh, that's where the really awesome, badass females show up. We have Big Alice, who's a bounty hunter. And we have Death Face Ginny shows up. Like the last page of the first issue, she shows up in a swirling, dramatic mess. It's awesome. Um, and they are hunting Sissy and Fox. And uh, that's where all of the chaos comes from. So I'm not gonna tell you any more plot, because that's Danger Zone. Um, but I will tell you more about the characters. So we have Death Face Sissy. She has this skull pattern tattooed or maybe born on her face, we're not sure. And uh, we have, yeah, Death Face Ginny. And then Sissy, Cloak Girl. We have Fox, her guardian, who's, if I didn't mention it, he has this massive scar on his face, and he's totally blind, and yet somehow he can shoot people from half a mile away and hit them. Mm. Also, there's some really 
great, just tough as nails women in this whole comic. My like one of my favorite kind of underlying characters is Sarah. First time you meet her, she's standing outside in her skirts with a shotgun shooting at, at Fox. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. Overall, this is just a really well-crafted piece of material. It's just a great graphic novel. The writing is done in such a way where you kind of get little moments of the plot all the way through, and then all of those little seemingly fragmented moments get tied together into this really powerful narrative, sneer, narrative, narrative by the end. And it, it's just, it's so compelling. It really just gets you to keep, keep turning, keep turning. What's next? What's happening next? The momentum is great. And then it's balanced really, really well with the artwork by Emma Rios. Stunning. She did it and she's taken the normal format of graphic novels where you have panel, 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 whatever, and kind of broken it apart. There's moments where you actually have, like, the entire page is kind of fluid, so you, it takes a little while to get used to, but you get to follow through the entire thing kind of a little bit more the way a manga would be read, rather than just traditional Western comic books. So that was really cool to see that style be expressed in this comic. The other thing they did was in the line art and the, and the colors, it all has this great texture to it that makes you feel like you're out in the West in the desert somewhere. You know, there's always sand and grit on everything and it's just grungy and grimy and it's really expressed through this artwork. So even though you're reading and want to, you know, keep going and find out what's next, you ha you're just drawn into pausing and really enjoying the artwork because it is stunning. It is absolutely stunning and so surreal. There are moments in this that I feel like just kind of bound outside of real reality and realism and go straight into surrealism with these dreamlike images and sequences. And it kind of reminds me of Sandman, actually. A lot of Sandman with that mystical realism that happens. Verdict? Five out of five blood-spattered stars. This is fantastic. You should read this, buy it, love it, and then reread it because I guarantee you're not going to actually get everything you want out of this book the first time you read it. There are things like, like the narrators that you're not going to understand their significance until the second or third reading. So if you, if you like, I'll put it this way, if you like the brutality of Preacher and you like that mystical fantasy feel of Sandman, that dark fantasy, and you, and you want both of those put into one thing, Pretty Deadly is a comic that you want to read. I did actually order a copy of Pretty Deadly from one of my local comic book shops because screw it! I want to support my local businesses. Um, it just takes a little bit longer sometimes. Whatever. I, God, I wish there was more of this coming out. So far, I haven't heard any news about more coming out. I've been watching the Tumblr for uh, Pretty Deadly and no whispers of new comics or issues coming out yet. So I think if we all just read this and enjoy it and talk about it, Maybe Image Comics will hear us and say, Oh, you want a volume two? Yeah, give us a volume two, please. That would be amazing. So talk about it, please. Let's get this to happen somehow. Let's go harass Emma Rios or someone. Be like, more, please. <laughs> this universe is so cool. I want more. Once again, I'm Jeanette, and you are watching Haunting Television, and if you like this video, please, please, please do like, comment, subscribe, all of that goodness. It really helps us out, and we like to know which videos you actually enjoy watching, because we don't know otherwise, and we'll just make random stuff. <laughs> also, also, if there's something you specific you want me to review, just tell me. I will read it. I'll go buy it and do that, because... I like things. I like reading things. Brrr, poor computer. It got bored. Until next time. I'll see you in your nightmares. Whoa. <laughs>